For computers that perform as no others do, and yet take only minutes to maintain, there is only one choice. Next computers, built by machines to be reliable, efficient, and incredibly capable, at a price competitors can't touch. Next manufactures computers in a fraction of the time others do, with board quality that establishes new industry standards. Users experience the integration of CD quality music, display postscript, built-in capability to send and receive facsimiles, 400 DPI printing, and true multitasking. Next, the revolutionary machines with a classic tradition, designed with care, built with care, and they perform almost without care. The next product line includes two basic types of computers, the Next Station and the Next Cube. Both are designed around Motorola 68000 series microprocessors. There is a distinct difference in the shape of their housing. Take a close look at the Next Station computer and its counterpart, the Next Station color computer. Each has a sleek black case. Each supports a Next megapixel display on top. The color logo identifies the Next Station color computer, and the silver on black logo marks the monochrome Next Station. Their connectors are easy to distinguish. A special DB25 size triple coax for the Next Station color, and a DB19 for the monochrome model. The original Next computer can be upgraded and room is provided for expansion. Many customers have chosen to replace the original Motorola 68030 processor board with the 68040 processor board, giving it the same power as the current Next Cube. It is easy to tell the processor boards apart by looking at their connectors. The 68030 processor board gives you a DB25 connector for SCSI peripherals and a single thin wire Ethernet connector. Compare the 68040 processor board's 50 pin SCSI 2 connector and two Ethernet options, thin wire coax or 10 base twisted pair. Next cubes can be expanded with additional boards available from Next or third parties. From Next comes an exciting addition called Next Dimension. The board transforms a Next cube into a Next Dimension system with 32-bit color, graphics coprocessing, and video capture and display. The Next Dimension board to the left of the ventilation grill provides connectors for video input, output, and the next megapixel color display. All Next computers have companion Next monitors that match them in performance and design. Next megapixel displays. Of the two monochrome monitors, the N4000A includes a built-in microphone and is 20 pounds lighter than the N4000. Both models require just one cable for connection to the computer and have centralized connections for the keyboard, stereo output, headphones, and an external microphone. All of these connections are on the back of the monitor. Next offers two megapixel color displays, 17-inch and 21-inch. Unlike Next monochrome monitors, Next color displays do not have multiple connectors. These connections are made in one of two ways. If the system uses a Next color display and only a color display, the connections are made here in the Next sound box. If a next dimension system uses a monochrome monitor along with a color monitor, there is no sound box. In this case, the keyboard, stereo, headphone, and microphone are always connected to the monochrome monitor. And a color monitor is linked directly to the next dimension board. One important note about power. The next cube, next station, and next station color all have self-switching power supplies that operate between 110 volts AC and 250 volts AC, 50 or 60 hertz. Just plug them in and they work. Because the monochrome monitor gets its power from the computer, it too works anywhere. Next color monitors require the same adjustment for local electrical voltage. On the 17-inch monitor, the switch is located on the back. On the 21-inch monitor, this switch is used to select the proper voltage. Always check these switches before plugging these items in. It only takes a second to check, and it may save you from damaging a power supply.
Servicing Next Computers is very straightforward. It requires only three tools, a Phillips head screwdriver, a hex wrench, and a SIM tool. Before doing any maintenance, remember that Next Computers, like all other computers, are vulnerable to static electricity. To avoid damaging components and circuits, be sure to follow proper static safety precautions, such as wearing a grounded wrist strap, and using static shielded bags when storing or carrying computer circuits. Never work on a computer when it's turned on. To turn off any Next Computer, press the power key and follow the directions on the screen. That's all there is to it. However, if the system does not turn off when the power key is used, the computer may be set to disable this function and an alternative method used. Please refer to the next user's reference manual for more detailed information on the sequence of keystrokes required to perform this function. To get inside the next station, remove the monitor from the computer's top. Use the Phillips screwdriver to remove the black screw from the center of the rear panel. With the top free, hold it by its sides. Tilt the top up at the rear of the computer and pull it away from the base toward the front. Now that the next station is exposed, almost any component can be removed quickly. The fan is a good example. To take it out, first disconnect its power cable from the processor board. Then use the Phillips screwdriver to remove the two long screws that attach the fan to the base. Next, lift the fan, noting the location of its power cable, and set the fan aside. Anything else that might need to be replaced or upgraded, the floppy disk drive, the hard disk drive, the power supply, and even the processor board is just as easy to handle. To take out the 2.88 megabyte floppy disk drive, first unplug the ribbon cable from the processor board. Bend the cable back over the drive to reach the screw below it. Next, undo the Phillips screw from the bracket attached to the floppy disk drive. Finally, tilt the drive up and lift it away from the base of the computer. That's it, unless the drive is being replaced with a new one. Then the original bracket and cable need to be removed so they can be reused on the new drive. The same removal sequence applies to any hard disk drive, regardless of its capacity. Simply unplug the ribbon cable from the processor board, unplug the power cable from the processor board, remove the Phillips screw from the hard disk drive bracket, Tilt the drive up and lift it away from the computer base. Again, remove the bracket and cables if the drive is being replaced with a new hard disk drive. To remove the power supply from the next station, unplug the power supply connector from the processor board, bend the cable back over the supply to reach the screw below it, remove the Phillips screw that holds the power supply to the base, slide the power supply toward the front of the computer and lift it up and away from the base. Memory SIMs can be added or replaced without removing the drives or the processor board. SIMs must be in banks of four for a next station. SIMs must be in banks of two for a next station color. The SIMs used in the next station color computer are different from those used in the regular next station and are not interchangeable. To insert SIMs into either computer's processor board, start from the side nearest the edge of the board. Use either 1 megabyte or 4 megabyte SIMs as long as all of them in any bank are the same type. To add SIMs, just press them firmly into their sockets. Before trying to remove the next station's processor board, take out both the floppy disk drive and the hard disk drive. Always replace the board as a total unit. It's not designed for field repair. To take out a next station processor board, remove the Phillips screw that fastens it to the computer base. Lift the front edge and pull the processor board slightly forward, away from the back panel, and carefully set it aside. If the processor board is being replaced, remove the SIMs from the old board and insert them into the new board, keeping the SIMs in the same location they were on the old board. To reassemble the computer, simply retrace the steps used to complete the disassembly. To replace the processor board, tilt it slightly and align its connectors with the corresponding openings in the rear of the computer base. Then pivot the board into position, press it securely in place, screw it back down, and slide the power supply back into it. Reattach the two drives, reconnect the fan, and it's done. Always double check to be certain that the processor board is seated over its positioning pins that all internal cables have been connected and are out of the way. 
and that nothing foreign, such as a loose screw, is in the computer. All that's left is to replace the cover and tighten the black screw, and put the monitor back on top if that is where the customer had it. Reconnect external cables to the rear of the computer. Procedures are similar for the next cube computer. Make sure the computer is off and unplug the power cable and any other cables that may be attached to the system. Put the next cube in the center of a work table with the system's back facing you. Use a three millimeter hex wrench to unscrew the four screws that secure the back panel. Since these screws are captured, stop unscrewing them when they are out of the panel and hanging loosely. Now that the back panel is released, unplug the coiled cable from the fan and pull the panel away from the computer. Inside the next cube, several configurations are possible. A 68030 processor board may be in the slot just to the right of the center assembly. Or a 68040 may be in that slot. If there is a next dimension board, it will be in the slot to the left of the center assembly. The slots are critical because each has its own unique bus address, and each board has to be installed in the correct location. The processor board is easy to remove. Hook your finger around the edge and slide it out about three inches. Disconnect its ribbon cables to free the board so you can slide it all the way out and place it face up on the static pad. Now the ribbon connectors are visible, as are the SIM sockets, ROM chip, and the socket where the NBIC is located if one has been installed. Adding or replacing SIMs in a next cube involves the same process used in the next station, even though the next cube has 16 sockets available. If the processor board is being replaced, remove the SIMs from the old board and insert them into the new board, keeping the SIMs in the same location they were on the old board. All SIMs have to be in banks of four. One megabyte or four megabyte SIMs can be used as long as all of them in any bank are the same type. To insert SIMs, start from the side of the board with the bus connector. Then press the SIMs firmly into the sockets. To work on a drive or a power supply, place the board in an unused slot next to the computer's outer wall where it will be safe and out of the way. To remove or replace an X dimension board, follow the same steps used for the processor board. Adding or replacing SIMs on a next dimension board involves the same process used with the processor boards. The next dimension uses the same type of SIMs as are used in the next station color computer. The center assembly is the steel box in the middle of the next cube. It's made up of two components, the power supply, which forms the bottom of the assembly, and the upper part, which holds all the disk drives. The center assembly must be removed to work on either the power supply or the drives. To remove the center assembly, use the hex wrench to take out the two screws at its base. Put them aside so you can find them when you're ready to reassemble. Pulling from the top of the center assembly, slide it out of the next cube and carefully place it on a work table. It's heavy, so take care not to jar or drop it. Remove the ribbon cables that attach all drives to the processor board by unclipping them from the wall of the center assembly. If there's an optical drive filter, remove it. Then disconnect the ribbon cable from the disk drives themselves. Check to make sure it's clean. You can get rid of any dirt by using a stiff brush, by blowing compressed air through the filter, or by knocking it sharply against a solid surface. Once the center assembly is out, any drives can be removed. A next cube can contain several possible combinations of drives. In the top of the center assembly, there may be a 3.5 inch disk drive, a 5.25 inch hard disk drive, or a 2.88 megabyte floppy disk drive with or without a 3.5 inch hard disk drive. In the bottom of the assembly, you may find a 256 megabyte read-write optical disk drive, a CD-ROM, or 5.25 inch hard disk drive. Since the drives look so different, it should be easy to recognize all configurations. To remove a disk drive, first disconnect its power cable. All drives, except for the floppy disk drive, have a separate power cable. Then turn the assembly on its side. On each side, there are two screws that mount each drive to the assembly. The floppy drive, optical drive, and CD-ROM drive are mounted with the holes marked O, while hard drives use the ones marked H. Notice that optical drives use hex screws instead of Phillips screws. Removing any drive involves basically the same process. 
Let's take out a hard disk drive as an example. Remove the two screws from one side of the hard disk drive's bracket. Turn the assembly over and remove the two screws from the other side. When removing the last one, be sure to steady the drive to keep it from slipping. The drive and bracket are now loose, so slide it straight out of the center assembly. The hard disk drive has now been removed. When replacing a drive that is mounted in a bracket, remove the bracket for use on the new drive. The center assembly has one remaining part, the power supply. To remove it, make sure the power cables are disconnected from any disk drive, then take out the two screws from one side of the center assembly. Then carefully turn the assembly over and remove the remaining two screws. The power supply will slide from the bottom of the assembly. Like the next station, the next cube can be reassembled by retracing each step of the disassembly process. That is how you replace the power supply, all drives, the center assembly, all cables, any optional boards, and the processor board. Attach the dust filter if one was installed on the back of the optical disk drive. Make sure that cables are rooted and connected just as they were before. Always double check everything, making certain the processor board is seated. All cables are safely out of the way, and there are no loose screws in the computer. Reconnect the fan and replace the rear panel. Tighten the four screws that hold it in place. It's best to do this in a diagonal order until they are snug. Connect the power and other cables to the rear of the computer. It's important to verify the repair. Since only this particular computer had a problem, it should be disconnected from the network so it's operating in standalone mode. Turn on the computer. If a login window appears on the screen, ask your customer to log in. Some systems take you straight to the workspace without logging in. Have the customer use the file viewer to browse through a few of the files that are shipped with the system. This tells you everything's fine so far. To check the drives, insert a floppy disk or an optical disk, or both, if the computer has both drives. If the disk mounts correctly, the icon will be visible in the file viewer. Click the icon to check the disk's content. Eject each disk by clicking Eject under Disk in the Workspace Manager menu. Now request that the customer go through the steps that first led to the service call. If something still isn't working properly, open the computer and check the work that was done. If the problem persists or the system fails, it'll be necessary to return to the beginning of the troubleshooting process. When everything works smoothly, ask the customer to log out following the directions on the screen. If the processor board has been replaced, the system administrator will need to change the network configuration database so it recognizes the new board. And the customer should be cautioned that all parameter settings have been set to their defaults. From a robot's touch to a technician's skilled hands, next computers stand apart. Be confident that should a service call come, there will be no surprises. No matter what the problem may be, it will be able to be handled in a manner that meets the needs of your customer. It's simply next.